Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thank you for coming by. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button and turn on my post notifications. That way you get notified every single time we go into a new chapter for whatever book we are on. Today we are going to go into chapter 33 of Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. So let's get right into it. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video. Now, you have been warned. All right, chapter 33. Pip sat in her car halfway down Cortland, not outside his house, just a little farther up so no one would see. Her thumbs on her phone, she played the audio clip of the last, audio clip one last time. Max at a clammy party in March 2014. Did you drug and rape Becca Bell? What? No, I fucking did it. Max, do not lie to me. I swear to God I will ruin you. Did you put Rohifenol in Becca's drink and have sex with her? Yes, but like, it wasn't rape. She didn't say no. Because you drugged her. You vile rapist gargoyle. You have no idea what you've done. Pip's ears rang, trying to push away his voice and listen to her own. Good and bad didn't matter here. There were only winners, and Max only won if she let him. That was justice. So she did it. She pressed the button, uploading the audio of that phone call to her website, reposting it on the podcast Twitter account. Alongside the post, she wrote, Max Hastings' trial, final update. I don't care what the jury believes. He is guilty. It was done. It was gone. There was no going back now. This was her, and it was okay. She dropped her phone out onto the passenger seat and picked up the can of paint she'd taken from the garage, tucking the brush into her back pocket. She opened the door, reaching back for the final item, a hammer that heard from her dad's toolbox before she stepped, stepping silently out of the car. She walked up the road, passing one house, two, three, four, until she stopped, looking up at the Hastings family sprawling home with its painted white front door. They were out, all of them, at their fancy dinner at the plaza, and Pip was here outside their empty house. At the drive, past the large oak tree, coming to a stop before the front door, she let the paint can on the ground and bent down to use the end of the hammer to pry open the lid. The can was half full, the paint was a dull green, Pip pulled out the brush and dipped it inside, spooling off the access. No going back. She took one breath and then stepped up, pressing the brush against the front door. She reached high, looping it up and down, crouching to pick up more paint when the lines ran dry. The letters are shaky and dripping, spreading out from the door to the light-colored bricks on either side. She went back over the words, deeper and darker, and when she was done, she dropped the brush of the, on the path, a, a small splatter of paint where it landed. She picked up the hammer, twirling it between her fingers, feeling its weight in her hands. She crossed the, to the left side of the house, to the window there. She readied her arm in the hammer, held it back, then she swung with full force into the window. It shattered. A sprinkling of broken glass fell inside and out, like glitter, like rain. Dusting the tops of her sneakers, she tightened her grip on the hammer, glass crunching under her feet as she approached the next window, pulled back and smashed it. The sound of the tinkling, tinkling glass lost beneath the rain, and the next window, first swing cracked, second swing exploded, past the front door to the wor words she painted there, to the windows on either side, one, two, three, until it, all six windows at the front of the house were destroyed, broken, open, exposed. <clears throat> Pip's breath was heavy in her chest now, right arm aching as she stepped back down toward down the drive. Her hair was matted and wet, wiping across her face as she looked up at the destruction, her destruction, and painted across the front door in the, some frost green shade as the Mboe's new shed were the words, Rapist, I will get you. Pip read them and read them again, looked around at what she did, and she checked down inside herself under her skin, but she couldn't find it. The scream was no longer there waiting for her. She'd beaten it. Can you come outside? She texted the rain pattering against her screen, the phone longer recognizing her thumb. Red, it said beneath her message a few seconds later. She watched the outside as the light in Robbie's bedroom clicked on and the curtain twitched for just a second. Pip followed his progress as the hall light turned on in the upper middle window and then down the stairs hall light glowing through the glass in the front door and it was broken up by Robbie's silhouette as he made his way toward it. The door opened and he stood against the light wearing just a white t-shirt and navy sweatpants. He looked at her 
then up at the rain in the sky. He walked outside, his feet bare, slapping against the path. Nice night, he said, squinting against the droplets running down his face. I'm sorry, Pip looked at him, her hair sticking to her face in long, dark streaks. I'm sorry I took it out on you. That's okay, he said. No, it's not. She shook her head. I had no right to be angry at you. I think I was angry at me, mostly, and it's not just everything that happened today. I mean, it is, but also I've been lying to myself for a while now, trying to separate myself from the person who became so obsessed with finding Amy Bell's killer, trying to convince everyone else it wasn't really me so I could convince myself. But I think now that it is me, and maybe I'm selfish, and maybe I'm a liar, and maybe I'm reckless and obs obsessive, and I'm okay with doing bad things when it's me doing them, and maybe I'm a hypocrite, and maybe none of this that is good, but it feels good. It feels like me, and I hope you're okay with all of that, because I love you too. She had barely finished speaking, but Robbie's hand was against her face, cupped around her cheeks, his thumb rubbing the rain from her bottom lip. He moved his fingers down to lift her chin, and then he kissed her. Long and hard, their faces wet against each other, both trying to fight a smile. But the smile broke eventually, and Robbie drew back. You should have just asked me. I knew exactly who you are. And I love her. I love you. Oh, by the way, I said it first. Yeah, in anger, said Pip. Ah, uh, that's just because I'm so brooding and mysterious. He pulled a face with puckered lips and two serious eyes. Um, Robbie? Yes, um, Pip? I need to tell you something something I just did? What did you do? <clears throat> he dropped the, <clears throat> the face until one that was actually serious. Pip, what did you just do? That is the end of the chapter. I will see you guys in the next video for chapter 34. Bye!